So I was having a conversation with a friend and she was telling me her worst dating story. Uh, okay, so this guy was late and he's just talking about himself a lot. Ugh, I couldn't, I, I just couldn't. Uh, that's your worst dating story? Yes, it was the absolute worst. Absolute worst? Yeah. Hold my LaCroix. Oh, yes! I am peeing LaCroix! And it feels so good! Oh, naturally essence urine! Oh, if I didn't have guests over, I would arc my pee stream right into my mouth to see if it tasted like pample mousse. Oh, this is so good. Sorry, I was uh, peeing. LaCroix, ooh, felt good. Uh, what were we talking about? Uh, it sounded like you were about to one-up me on a dating story. Oh, yeah. Oh, you have no idea. Hold my LaCroix. Yeah, I can keep this guy going on all day long because I drink a lot of LaCroix. But anyway, let's go on to my worst dating story. So I met a girl online. Um, you know, let's just call her Darlene. Uh, we're messaging back and forth. And then we decide that we are going to go to dinner together. So we get a little Ethiopian food. My favorite. Callback. And, you know, she seems... Uh, a little spacey. Yeah, and she's a little weird. She's kind of a low talker. And, you know, she's pretty, but she's also pretty. Disconnected with reality. I don't know. We were having a nice conversation, I think. I could barely hear it. Oh, yeah, I love Sum 41. Can you pass the salt? I like to put in my ones. Oh, I was able to pick out the word salt in there. Here, let me get that to you. Thanks, 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 diarrhea. Oh, cool. I'm not going to lie. I did not understand any of that. And, you know, outside of that, it's just kind of a standard date, uh, nothing special. We finish up our food and then uh, we go outside. And, you know, usually around here is where I try to pull one of my standard guy moves to keep her interested in me. You know, I'll walk her to her car, wait for her Uber, uh, talk about Saved by the Bell. So, do you think you'd be friends with Zach and Screech if you went to Bayside? Yeah, she just like walked right off. It was really weird. And then suddenly she comes back and the next moment is... I don't know, I can only describe it as if she remembered that it's human to do things at the end of the date, like say goodbye. Bye. Yeah, it's really hard to convey how strange it felt. I probably should have just ended it there. So I go out with her again. So we go to the movie theater, we're there to see this awesome PG-13 action flick. And partway through the movie, she just starts freaking out and covering her eyes. And you know, the movie wasn't really that scary, but, you know, okay, it's fine. Hey, are you alright? Should we leave, or do you wanna... Oh no, it's fine. Uh, okay. So afterwards, uh, she says she needs some time to process everything she just saw, but, you know, we get to talking, uh, things start to calm down, she's telling me about the spa trip, uh, that she's taking that weekend, and she shows me her reservation. And it looks cool until I see the name on the receipt. So yeah, her name's not Let's Call Her Darlene. Yeah, that's not the name she used in her dating profile. I think she should, probably should have told me this at this point. It's all a little bit weird. Yeah, I probably should have ended it there. So I'll go out with her again. Let's see if she wants to get Thai food and she is totally down. So, you know, maybe things are on the up and up. I drive to her place and she lives on this off street with no road, just like an alleyway with uh, only walking access to all the buildings. So I get to her apartment building and she buzzes me in and I walk by the unit next to hers and I'm like, okay, this is pretty swanky and it's being renovated and they're installing like new hardwood floors, paint supplies, plastic sheetings all over the place. Obviously, she is living in a nice area. So, you know, I'm stoked on this Thai food uh, because it's Thai food. I can't wait to eat and I knock on her door and her dog is just barking and barking. Uh, she opens the door and she greets me. Her 100 pound giant dog walks over to greet me. Now, this dog has done nothing wrong, uh, but she looks at her dog and then snaps her fingers and then she just stares at it intensely, just uncomfortably long. She has this dog under her control. Then suddenly, she snaps out of it, out of this intense stare. Oh, good boy, good boy. Like nothing happened. Like she didn't just stare at her dog uncomfortably long for a really long time. I'm just repeating myself at this point. 
It was awkward. Now look, I know some dog owners do stuff like this to assert their dominance, especially if they have larger dogs. But this one really felt like controlling and domineering. And this was longer and more intense than anything I've ever seen of any dog owner ever before. And of course I shrug it off and we go inside. Hey, we'll go in a couple minutes. I just want to finish my coffee here. And we go in and we tour the place and she's got this like fully furnished kitchen, you know, pots, pans, full knife set, utensils, decorations. And also uh, she has just poured that coffee and we are not leaving anytime soon. I've never seen a cup this massive. It was like half the size of her head. Uh, so she's a therapist and she shows me her work computer where she does her online sessions, pill bottles. Um, it was a pretty sweet setup uh, to work from home. And we sit down in the living room and she is just sipping that coffee. And this goes on for like 20 minutes. And I am just itching to get some food. And she was not finishing anytime soon. Are you sure you don't want a cup of coffee? No, I don't want an oversized cup of coffee. I just want some Thai food. And then her roommate comes down, who uh, is also named Andrew. Uh, he's also a gamer dude, um, and I don't think he expected me to be coming over. Uh, so he goes back upstairs, and then he comes down with a black roll. Now, while you may not be freaking out, I was, because I know what that thing is. Only two people carry that thing. Professional chefs and Dexter, the Bay Harbor butcher. Know what it is immediately. It is a thick roll of knives. All right, let's rewind a little bit. I remember when I looked around the kitchen, they already had a pretty sweet knife set, but he goes in the kitchen and he unrolls these knives and he pulls one out and he just starts sharpening it in front of me, in the living room, cold staring me in the eye. And I am genuinely freaking out. Like, what, what is going on? This feels like it's a, like a scene from a movie. The dude just pulled out a knife and he's like eyeing me down and sharpening it in front of me. And I look to her and I'm like, Hey, your roommate looks like he is threatening me. Uh, I'm scared. Um, thoughts? And she's just there, slowly sipping her coffee. Like nothing in this situation is wrong. Look, maybe he is a chef, right? Um, so he pulls out some vegetables like he's making lunch and then I watch him cut an onion. Uh, yeah, no, he has no clue what he's doing. Not a chef, I might die. So after like a long, long, long uncomfortable moment, she finally has finished that coffee. And she makes her way to the kitchen to fill it up again. She's got another full cup of coffee. We're gonna be there another 20 minutes. And when I'm looking back at the kitchen, I'm like, wait a second. Doctors don't just have a bunch of bottles of pills laying around just to hand out, especially ones doing at-home teleconferencing. What the hell's going on? I don't want whatever you and your serial killer roommate are gonna go put in that coffee. I just want some damn Thai food. I just want some tasty noodles with some bok choy sprinkled in. And we're there for another 15 or 20 minutes with me not trying to crap out my intestines from all the fear. And she's just slowly sipping her coffee and he's just sharpening his knives. And you know, let's just get the dog a machine gun. Why not? No, this is going on. I just want to get out of there. It's want to go. So finally we go to the Thai restaurant and of course, Fate's just like, you know what, let's keep piling things on to this date. A girl uh, who ghosted me a few dates earlier was only a few tables down, and she looked like she was having a pretty miserable time with her new guy. Yeah, I know the feeling. So things are a little bit calmed down from this moment. We're talking. She tells me, you know, all the things about her. And, you know, we start to really uh, dive a little deeper with each other. Uh, she told me how she was uh, new to town. She told me about her divorce, the ADD, synesthesia. Her roommate, who was a recovering meth addict, who she was giving a free place to stay. You know, a lot of this actually starts to explain away everything that was going on. And, you know, maybe, maybe this was just in my head. This is stupid. I, I start to mellow out. But there's that part of me that just can't seem to shake how weird this whole situation was. Really. I should have ended it there. And I'm glad I did. No, I didn't. I went out with her again. And so I stopped by her place to pick her up, and her roommate is there in the dark watching the Adams Family movie. Cool story about a family that laughs in the face of 
the people they kill. Uh, cool thing. So yeah, he's not too talkative, but I write this off because I'm an idiot. And we make it to the theater, uh, and it's one of these nice theaters uh, where your show starts exactly on time. And you are not allowed to be five minutes late at all. So we get our tickets early, and we go to the bar, and she's drinking, and I'm like, uh, the movie's about to start. Maybe we should uh, start making our way to the theater. And she hates her time. And of course, we're five minutes late, so and I go to the usher. Hey, can I? Nope. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. It's like we're missing the movie. So we have to wait around for the next showing. And at this point, uh, I'm pretty guarded. I don't really trust her. I'm kind of on edge from everything that happened the previous date. Uh, and this time, uh, I'm seeing that, you know, really we're not that into each other. So we go and watch the movie, and then we get food afterwards. And we're at this dive place getting food, and there's this clear moment where she realizes she's done with me too. And I saw it because she got a mischievous look on her face. And she says to me, Hey, so I do this for a living. Uh, oh, Scooby-Doo. Yeah, I know what's coming. She is about to psychologically analyze me and break me down. Now, mind you, I was very guarded. I do the whole, uh, you know, I, and I kind of knew what to expect in this moment. Ah, uh, but she starts grilling me. Andrew, throughout your whole life, the only thing that's ever held you back is you. And with a handful of words, it's like she just stabbed me through the chest and just taps my heart, a little tippy tap. And just like that, I'm emotionally wrecked internally. I'm on the cusp of bursting into tears, but I also know I'm being very manipulated right now. And she, of course, is cool as a cucumber. And at this point, I should have walked away. So thank goodness. I left the date and I said goodbye. Of course I didn't say goodbye. I went back to her place. And she's doing that thing, you know, with her dog again, where she's just proving that she is in control of this dog. And I'm sitting there broken emotionally. And I realize she has me in full control, just like her dog. I get up, I'm taking this in, and I just go to sit in a chair for a second. And on the chair are two knives, sharp, perfectly parallel, clearly on display for use. And in like one of those move you flashback type things, I think back to how she could recognize the behavior, how she knew what was going on the day before with her roommate, sharpening those knives and being able to read my fear and her being okay with it. And I succumb to my fate. Cowardice. Hey, it was so much fun hanging out tonight. See you later, bye. I walk past that swanky front apartment being renovated and I see the hardwood floors and the plastic sheeting and I think, oh, no, 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 no. That was the staging ground. I hightail it out of there. I just need to get back to the road. Oh, of course, in front of her building, there is no road. There's that long offshoot alleyway. Anything could happen to me out here. No one's gonna find me. She could just crossbow me from hundred feet away. And by the way, I damaged both my calves trying to impress one of my friends. So all I could do is really hobble out of there. Every few seconds, I'm just turning over my shoulder thinking, oh my gosh, is she gonna kill me? I make it to my car, I drive off, and I never see her again. So I go out with her. No, I don't go out with her again. I actually quit dating for a year after that. Crap, that was crazy. Oh, and you probably want to hold my LaCroix again for this. Here's the even more messed up part. Were she and her roommate some weird serial killer duo? Or was this in my head? Because, okay, let's just rewind a bit from her perspective. Date one, she's just kind of a weird girl. She goes on an okay date. Date two, her mental health stuff starts to make an appearance, but otherwise she just rolls with the punches. And we had a nice conversation. Date three, there's this guy and he's opening up a little, but he seems a little guarded. The ADD made her miss or disregard some of the weird things that her roommate was doing. Or maybe this is just part of his everyday behavior. Date four, there's this wildly closed off anxiety filled guy that she thought she liked, but then he seems like a bit of a mess. And just talking to him, clearly he has a lot of issues. Uh, and then all of a sudden I just never hear from him again. Or, uh, no, you probably want to keep holding this LaCroix. What if this was just a roommate trying to scare me off? Because, you know, he was on tough times. He was probably afraid that, you know, here's another Andrew spending all this time uh, with her. And if I get close or let's say we go the distance, I might move in and then just get it in her head uh, about getting rid of him. And then he loses his free meal ticket and his free apartment. And it's probably better off to scare this dude with some knives before he gets too close. And the thing is, I'll never know the truth. Anyway, that's the time I almost got serial killed on a date. Uh, you still holding my LaCroix? Actually, I think I got one that might top that. I went to Olive Garden with this guy and he did not get the unlimited breadsticks. Okay, hands down, you win. How does a monster like that exist in this world?
Moisty Moistness.